Hello and welcome. As you have seen in my previous videos, I have been discussing the sexually immoral teachings of the Quran and Muhammad. In this video, I will be continuing that topic. Please note I will not be attacking Muhammad or Muslims. I will simply read Islamic sources and then ask Muslims some important questions. So let's begin. Let us turn to the Quran, chapter 66, verse 1. It says, quote, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ لِمَا تُحَرِّمُ مَا أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ لَكَ تَبْتَغِي مَرْضَاتَ أَزْوَاجِكَ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Which translates as, O Prophet, why do you forbid yourself that which Allah has made lawful for you? You seek to please your wives, and Allah is forgiving, merciful. Now, in order for us to understand the historical context of this Quranic revelation, we first need to turn to the tafsir or exegesis literature for an official Islamic commentary on the Quran. When we do that, we find something very disturbing. In Tafsirul Jalalain, which is one of the most popular classical commentaries, we read the following explanation of Quran chapter 66, verse 1. Quote, O Prophet, why do you prohibit what God has made lawful for you, in terms of your Coptic handmaiden Mari, Maria, when he lay with her in the house of Hafsa, who had been away, but who, upon returning and finding out, became upset by the fact that this had taken place in her own house and on her own bed, by saying, She is unlawful for me, seeking by making her unlawful for you, to please your wives. And God is forgiving, merciful, having forgiven you this prohibition. Now we are starting to understand what the Quran is actually saying in chapter 66, verse 1. Muhammad's wife Hafsa caught him in her house and on her own bed, having sex with another woman. Muhammad was not married to this woman. She was only his female slave. Her name was Maria, or Mary and she was originally a Coptic Christian from Egypt. As you would expect, when Muhammad's wife Hafsa came home and found out about the sex, she became very upset, and Muhammad found himself under pressure. So he promised to, ha promised to stop having sex with the female slave. And when we continue reading the tafsir for just two verses later in ayah number three, we notice that Muhammad was seeking to avoid further embarrassment because he told his wife, do not reveal it. Now, if you're a Muslim or if you're considering converting to Islam, you might be questioning the validity of this embarrassing story in the tafsir. You might be saying to yourself, this can't be true because Muhammad was a holy man, a true prophet of God, while this story describes a man who disrespects his wife and is unable to control his wild sexual passions. Basically, it's a story where Muhammad's wife catches him having sex with a slave. So, how does Muhammad get out of this dilemma? Well, he conveniently claims to receive a revelation from God, Quran chapter 66, verse 1, which effectively silences his protesting wives and makes permissible for him sex with a female slave. Well, for those of you questioning the validity of this story, I'm sorry to inform you, but this story does find validation and confirmation in the following authentic hadith in Sunan an Nasa'i, volume 4, hadith number 3411, we read, quote, عن أنس أن فلم تزل به عائشة وحفصة حتى حرمها على نفسه فأنزل الله عز وجل يا أيها النبي لما تحرم ما حل الله لك إلى آخر الآية The translation is It was narrated from Enes that the messenger of Allah, meaning Muhammad, had a female slave with whom he had sexual intercourse. But Aisha and Hafsa would not leave him alone until he said that she was forbidden for him. Then Allah, the mighty and sublime, revealed, quote, O Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself 
that which Allah has allowed to you. Quran 66 verse 1 until the end of the verse. And this hadith is indeed sahih or authentic. So as you have just seen, this story is indeed authentic and is therefore very damaging to the reputation of Muhammad. Listen, I'm not making this story up. Instead, you've seen it yourselves directly from the Islamic sources. And if you're angry right now, then you're not angry at me. Actually, you're angry at the sources of Islam. And in fact, if Islam didn't teach these things, I wouldn't even be making these videos. And think about it. To add insult to injury, just read Quran chapter 66 verses 3 to 5. You will see the God of the Quran, Allah, actually criticizes Muhammad's protesting wives, Aisha and Hafsa, for condemning him for having sex with Mary, the slave, a woman who he was not married to. Now here are my questions for Muslims to think about and answer. Question number one. Why didn't Muhammad just wait for his wife Hafsa to come home and fulfill his sexual desires with her, rather than having sex with a female slave in the temporary absence of Hafsa? Question number two. To add insult to injury, Muhammad performed that sexual act in the house of Hafsa and on her bed. Do you think Muhammad acted sensitively and respectfully to Hafsa? In fact, if you really want to understand how Hafsa felt when she came home and found out what Muhammad did, you can read about her reaction in the History of at tabari Volume 9, page 131. In the bottom footnote, it says about Hafsa, quote, One day, when she returned from her father's house, she found the Messenger of God, meaning Muhammad, with Maria in her house and burst into hysterical behavior. Question number three. If Hafsa was perhaps on her menses and was therefore unavailable to please Muhammad, then why didn't he just wait to see one of his other wives and fulfill his sexual desires with one of them? Remember, chapter 66 of the Quran is not a Meccan surah, but is actually a Medinan surah. And we know that in the Medinan period, Muhammad already had multiple wives available to him, and specifically at the time when he obtained Mary as a female slave. And we know Muhammad used to take turns visiting and staying with different wives on different nights. So why couldn't he just control his sexual passions and prevent himself from having sex with that female slave? These are my questions for you Muslims to think about and answer. Thank you for watching.